Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to use the Gaussian method of elimination in order to find the rho echelon form or the reduced rho echelon form of this matrix, which is a representation of those three equations forming a system of linear equations. We're trying to solve that system of linear equations by looking for the value of x, y, and z that satisfy all three equations. We're going to do that by taking this augmented matrix and reducing it so that we have ones across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. How do we do that? Well, the first step we do is we go to the very, very first upper left corner, that element right there, and try to change that to a one. We can do that by multiplying the entire row by one fourth to reduce this to a one. So we're going to take the first row, R1, and change it to making it one quarter R1. Basically, we're dividing that entire row by four. If we do that, we get the following reduced matrix. So we get a one, a 2, a negative 1, and a 1 over here. Everything else stays the same. We have a 3, an 8, a 5, a minus 11, a minus 2, a 1, a 12, and a minus 17. So the first thing we did was put a 1 over here by taking the first row and dividing every element in that row by 4. Next, we want to get rid of the 3, and we want to get rid of the negative 2. Since we have a 1 there, we have a really easy technique to do that. We take the second row, R2, and we replace it by the negative of this number, negative 3, multiply times the row that has a 1 in it, which is R1, and adding it to the existing row 2. We do the same for row 3. We take row 3, and we replace it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 2, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the third row. If we do the operation, we'll get the following matrix. Notice that the first row doesn't change, so we keep everything the same. We have a 1, a 2, a negative 1, and a 1. But the second row, negative 3 times a 1 gives us a negative 3. Added to a 3 gives me a 0. But we, of course, have to do the same with all the other elements on that same row. So negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Added to 8 gives me a positive 2. Negative 3 times a negative 1 is a positive 3. Added to 5 gives me positive 8. And a negative 3 times a 1 gives me a negative 3. Added to minus 11 gives me a minus 14. Doing the same for the third row. Twice this added to that gives me 0. 2 times 2 added to 1 gives me 5. 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2. Added to 12 gives me a 10. And 2 times a 1, that's 2, added to negative 17 gives me a negative 15. So I've got the first row just where I wanted it. I wanted to get, go ahead and get zeros there and get a 1 there. The next thing I want to do is take this one, because I want to go across the diagonal, and get 1s everywhere, and turn it into a 1. I can do that by multiplying that entire row by half or simply dividing that row by 2. So I take the second row and replace it by 1 half times the second row. And when I do that, I get the following matrix. Notice nothing changes in row 1, so that's still a 1, a 2, a negative 1, and a 1. Nothing changes on row 3, that's a 0, a 5, a 10, and a negative 15. But notice that the second row now becomes a 0, a 1, a 4, and a minus 7. All right, the next thing, if I want to get the reduced row echelon form, I want to turn both of those into zeros. If I only want to do the row echelon form, all I need to do is turn this into a zero. I can do that by, now let's move over here, by taking the third row, because that's where I want to change the five to zero. I'm going to take the third row, multiply that one by negative five, and add, and no, take the negative of that number, multiply times the row to one in it, and adding it to that row. So row three becomes the negative five times the row with the one in it, which is row two, and adding it to row three. If I do that, the five will become a zero. So let's go ahead and write the new matrix. So notice that row one doesn't change. That's still a one, a two, a negative one, and we get a one here. The second row doesn't change. It's a zero, a one, a four, and a negative seven. And the third row, notice that this will remain a zero, no matter what. The second one, I multiply negative five times one, added to that gives me zero. And negative five times four is negative 20, added to that row gives me a negative 10. A negative five times a negative seven is a positive 35, added to minus 15 gives me a positive 20. All right, almost there. 
Next thing I want to do is take this and turn that into a positive 1, which means I need to take row 3 and replace it by negative 1 over 10 times row 3. In other words, divide that row by negative 10. When I do that, this will become a 1. So let's go ahead and see what we end up with. Notice that we have the first row doesn't change, 1, 2, negative 1, and 1. Second row doesn't change, 0, 1, 4, negative 7. The third row, this remains a 0, that remains a 0, this will become a 1, and 20 divided by a negative 10 becomes a negative 2. At this point, I have reached what we call the row echelon form. The row echelon form dictates that I have ones across the diagonal and zeros in the lower bottom left corner, which means I can now read out the solution. Z is equal to negative 2. I can then take the negative 2, plug it in here, and get a value for Y, plug in a value for Z and Y here, and I get the value for X. However, what we could have done is we could also take these three elements and turn them into zeros. But in other words, not just go to the row echelon form, but go to the reduced row echelon form, the form that I really prefer. So what we can do is we can go ahead and turn this into a zero by taking the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, multiplying times the row with the one in it and adding it to the first row. And that way I eliminate these two that becomes a zero. So let's go ahead and see what we get. So that means the second row doesn't change, 0, 1, 4, negative 7. The third row stays the same, 0, 0, 1, and negative 2. And the first row, this stays at 1. So I'm multiplying negative 2 times 1 added to that gives me 0. Negative 2 times 4, that's negative 8, added to 1 gives me negative 9. Negative 2 times 7 times the negative 7 gives me a positive 14, added to 1 gives me a positive 15. All right. All I have left to do now is get rid of the 4 here and get rid of the negative 1. That I can do with the following operation. I can take the first row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is 9, add it to the row with 1 in it, row 3, and add it to row 1. I take the second row and replace it by the negative of that number, which is negative 4, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R3, and add it to that row right there. And that will get these two numbers to be zeros, and I'll get the values there that belong to y and x. So when I do that, I get the following result. Okay, what doesn't change, of course, is the third row right here. So that would be 0, 0, 1, and negative 2. Okay, going to the first row, this will stay as a 1 and a 0, so that doesn't change. But here, I take 9 times 1, add it to minus 9, that gives me 0. 9 times negative 2, that's negative 18, added to, minus, added to positive 15 gives me a negative 3. Now for the second row, what I do is I take minus 4 times this, so I, 0 and 1 doesn't change. Minus 4 times 1 is minus 4, added to 4 gives me 0. Minus 4 times a negative 2 is a positive 8, added to negative 7 gives me a positive 1. Now I have what we call, what we call in the reduced echelon form. And when we get it to this stage, I can simply read out the solution. I know that this is the column representing x, this is the column representing y, and this is the column representing z. So this tells me 1x plus 0y plus 0z is negative 3. So that means x is equal to negative 3. 0x plus 1y plus 0z equals 1. That means y equals 1. And finally, 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals negative 2. That means z equals negative 2. And here is the solution of my system of linear equations. So instead of algebraically reduce that system of linear equations to find x, y, and z, we can simply use the augmented matrix form and use the method of Gaussian elimination to end up with ones across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else to read out the values for x, y, and z. So typically, I don't want to stop here. I simply want to continue with this and reduce everything else in each column to zeros except for the ones across the diagonal. And then I have a nice form in which I can tell the answer of x for x, y, and z. And that's how it's done. So we'll do a few more examples so you can see how we manipulate the equations like that, even some odd-looking equations or systems of linear equations to come up with the solutions for x, y, and z. And that's how we do it.